Welcome, welcome into Anime Plus, episode 80. Hopefully you're having an incredible day, whatever day you're watching or listening to this podcast. Uh, I got my boy here with me. I got Zach over Discord, though. Zach, how you doing? How you feeling today? Um, I'm good. Um, I don't know. I feel like we haven't done one of these in a while again. I mean, that's not horribly inaccurate because we took the break last week. Yeah, yeah. Because my Twitter handle, yeah, the Twitter name is still called Break Week. So, yes, took a break week last week so yeah it has been a little bit it has been a little bit we're back on it though got a lot to talk about and you know i will say i was kind of bummed that we didn't get to do it last week after just how absolutely incredible summertime rendering was oh my god oh yeah you blew me oh up my about god dude i am so upset that this show is locked behind disney plus in another country i'm so upset about it like dude if this show was just on crunchyroll where everyone could easily access and doesn't have to bootleg it or something like I'm doing, bro, this show would be popping off. It's so, so, so good. And I will say this, I will say this, depending on how this series ends, I actually have no idea, I've not spoiled myself for once, depending on how this series ends, if it ends in a good way, good ending, this could be a top 10 series all time for me. Just saying. Hey, there you go. Dude, That's I, what you need. Dude, I love this fucking show so much, but it all comes down to the ending. You know, it all because it all comes down to how it's going to end. Because yeah. the manga is not long, so I can safely assume twenty five episode twenty five will end up the just the whole series. Whatever won't be like a second season. So this is just a one off thing, like kind of like uh, Platinum Man was, which yeah. we never finished. Of course, we never went back and finished Platinum. Nope. Man. nope. <laughs> Interesting concept. Terrible characters. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. When you're, when... I mean, terrible M's. I mean, not an MC you can get attached to. Yeah. The other characters were fairly interesting. Mister Sure. Mr. Sure was, Rest in was peace. the best. Rest in peace, Mr. Sure. R.I.P. Mr. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll never remember your name. That's true. I still don't know what his <laughs> name is. <laughs> Shout out to you, though, bro. Uh, if you could, give us a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, be a friend, tell a friend. Uh, go check us out on Twitter, at Animan Podcast. We'd appreciate the follow, as well as our website, sparky3.com. You can sign up for free. Sign up five bucks a month. We do have a promo code in the merch store, sparky3shop.com. Art is cool, because I recently launched some canvas arts for our three main podcasts to so go pick something up there that'd be we definitely appreciate that uh join the discord especially because the terrible football show is about to come back here this upcoming week with live shows we're gonna be taking callers so come give your thoughts on anything going on in the football world we'll chat with you uh and check out our sponsors like rogue entry promo code sparky3 uh swift grips promo code game aesthetic and red dragon promo code game aesthetic i think that's it i think we hit everything they hit everything yeah, i think so. you everything. all right bet bet let me turn down the music then uh, before we really jump into some stuff, uh, anything that you want to chat about? Shout out to next week. Uh, should be the Crunchyroll Convention Expo. Yep. And finally see something more on Chainsaw Man. Got a new uh, key visual art this past week, as well as like the lineup for everyone doing the doing the show, which I actually have here in front of me. So like the director of the entire show is uh, Ryu uh, Nakayama. He was the okay. episode 19, specifically, uh, director for JJK, which I believe was the hype shit. That was the hype fight with uh, I believe so, yeah, yeah. With, with Yuji and uh, Toto. Uh, screenplay by the dude that's done like Mob Psych 100, JJK, character design uh, by Jobless Reincarnation, action anime director. Here's an interesting one, because we've always talked about this. The dude that's worked on Black Clover. <laughs> that should be very interesting because Black Clover, they yeah. go wild with sometimes, bro. Uh, you know, assistant director worked on JJK and uh, Gridman, uh, Devil Design, uh, made, you know, it was uh, by the person that was worked on Space Dandy, background art director, Vinland Saga, JJK, a lot of JJK stuff across the board. Color design, sort of line, um, screen More design. Less base wood, everything. This lineup means Chainsaw Pan. Should yep. be good. Yes, exactly. That that's the bottom line. It, it's got a it's got a stacked stacked cast of, of who's all like working on the actual show. So that's pretty. That's gonna be pretty sick. Um, yeah. Anything that you want to shout out? I'm scrolling through Twitter to make sure there's nothing that I'm missing here. Um, just because we missed it because we didn't have a show last week. Just the trailer from Gundam, which from Mercury. True. True. It didn't show off a whole lot, but it did say, hey, there's going to be simulcast starting in October, so add that to your list of fall stuff. <laughs> oh, I know, man. 
Oh, I know. Dude, we're going to have... It's going to be It's gonna be tough. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be fun. It's going to be tough, though. It's going to be really hard. Uh, I will say a couple other things because I'm now scrolling through the Twitter, the twatters, and getting a mental refresh. Uh, looks like we got like three different sets of T's and P's that we got to throw out here uh, that I'm now refreshing my mind on. Uh, so the first set of T's and P's, which I guess this is more so... A shout out, like partially, I guess. I mean, it's shout out for a lot of people, but I know for people we know, you and uh, our boy Diaz uh, specifically uh, is the Tower of God creator. Uh, is once again in terrible health, and Tower mm-hmm. Tower of God has now entered an indefinite hiatus. There, it's so a big T's and P's there to everyone, friends and family, and of course the creator. Uh, and then this one was also very, very depressing to see. Very, very depressing. Uh, the artist for solo leveling has passed away. So moment of silence there. Moment has passed. That was a big depressing one to see the other day. T's and P's, friends and family. And then uh, lastly, this one's just really sad. Just because it's like, they're only like six chapters in. They're getting like a ton of, po- like it's already getting a lot of popularity. People f- have already starting to fall in love with this series. And it's like four chapters in, it already had to go on a break. It came back with like chapter five, I think. Then it had to go on another break. Then chapter six came out. And now it's just on an indefinite hiatus. Uh, the artist, uh, not the artist, but just the, you know, the, the entire creator for Ruri, uh, Ruri Dragon, Ruri Dragon, um, mm-hmm. of Weekly Shonen Jump just started recently is, uh, in just, and apparently also in just terrible con- health condition. So big T's and P's there. That, that's a bummer way to start your series in Shonen Jump. Yeah. You know, you're six chapters in, man. And you have to go on indefinite hiatus. That's just a big bummer. Uh, you, you know, and I, I want to stress when I say a big bummer, I'm not saying a big bummer as like a reader. Cause I haven't even read this. I'm saying a big bummer for the creator. Like, you know, they've got to just be like kind of just horribly upset about this where it's just like, man, come on. It's like, you know, you got this new series in Shonen Jump, but like, dude, I'm just feeling like shit or whatever, whatever the problem is. Like, yeah, this, you, you know, that, you know, they're not feeling great about this. Yeah, you know, not, no, not at all. From a physical standpoint and a mental standpoint. So massive T's and P's there. Uh, on some lighter notes, though, uh, did you see the cast for Yu Yu Show live action? I did not read the full cast. I did see the, uh... the images. The poster shots they were putting up, like the pinup shots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it looks good. I think it looks good. I mean, they, they they nailed these characters. We talked about Yusuke's look a long time ago when it got leaked out. Yeah. I, I thought it looked fine, personally. Um, yeah, I remember talking about that and thinking that looked fine, so. Yeah. Uh, I also saw where the, the, the censorship in Square Enix's Manga Up app is absolutely unreal. Did you see about that? I did not because oh, I don't my. use that app, so I've never looked into it. See, I don't use it either, but like, bro, I, I, I retweeted this at Anime Podcast. You should give it me a follow. Um, dude, like, just it was just a, like an absurd black square that they'll just put over stuff. And like one of the, the <laughs> ones that they, uh, they, they, they covered up a knee. I'm not, <laughs> like, I'm not joking, dude. They covered up a knee. They put a black square over a knee, dude. Like, it's, like, just, like, the most obs- obscene things, just, like, to put a black square over. It's like being that teacher at a dance and just being, like, yeah, y'all need to put Jesus in between y'all. Basically, basically. Uh, the only other last thing I got is uh, Mission Yo's core family once again getting the shaft. Because uh, Undead and Luck is apparently getting an anime uh, here soon. Get the confirmation. So, that's, like, I think the fourth series... That has started after Yozakora Family. Yes, the fourth. the Because f- it's uh, Under the Luck, Mashal, uh, Aikashi Triangle, and Me and Robico. Four series that have started after I- Yo- Yozakora Family have all been confirmed for animes. The Yozakora Family is just like, hey, I'm here. I'm hanging out. They're waiting for Yozakora Family to get to, to the end. Yeah, in my opinion, I agree. Like, I feel like Yozakora Family is going to be pretty deep into its its run or ended by the time they... they uh, release anime information i'm pumped when it comes out i just hope they don't like just fuck it and throw it out to the wolves like hey you got an anime stop bitching studio dean get to work and it's just like come on man really like do we have to really do yozakor family that way you know come on give yozakor family some love it's good you never know studio dean here you go take yozakor family ruin that one too Thanks, make them just slide across the screen. Make them look one D. No, please no. That that bond fight. <laughs> that bond fight is just so bad. 
Oh, man. All right, let's jump into some uh, anime chats. You want to kick things off with Overlord? How's things going over in that world? I mean, world. Overlord, good. It was finally the first chapter not involving <laughs> focusing on one of the other kingdoms, more or less. The previous episode, episode three, followed the kingdom he's supposedly allied with. And the guy trying to make plans behind Ainz's back to try and more or less defeat Ainz and everything. And it just ends with him and trying to do a secret meeting at a Coliseum and Ainz showing up to battle there and just like, hi, and everything. And the, him just freaking out. He saw through all my plans. He's ruined everything. He's made it where they think I'm a traitor now. <laughs> and just freaking him out. Then it goes to this episode four. And he's literally just there to recruit people from the Empire to, for his Adventures Guild. So he wants to support them so they can go and explore the unknown. So he's there just to fight and, and uh, advertise for his Adventures Guild. He had no clue the guy was doing this. He had no idea. He was just like, oh, I'm secretly here. If I get found out, oh, well, I'm friends with the king. He'll let it pass, right? Who cares? You know, whatever. <laughs> so he shows up and he says hi to the king and the king just starts freaking out. He's like, oh, okay. Fights the Empire's strongest warrior named the Warrior King and all this fun stuff. And it just ends up becoming a thing of him fighting when he's known to be a mage and using this just physical might and everything and some magical items. And even him going like, oh, I gave myself more restrictions for this fight. And this troll he's fighting and all this fun stuff is just trying its best to even damage him and everything and just the crowd being put into a hush silence just because of how immense the strength of him at Heinz Ulgon is, and him not realizing is like, oh, I've figured a bigger reaction, and him not realizing they're all deadly afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, you see this? This is my power. I will support you all if you come and join my Adventures Guild. I even can stop death. And he brings back the troll he killed in the match back to life. And he pieces out. <laughs> that's pretty much what it was mostly just the Ein's reason for being there and then just the fight itself which the fight was animated very well okay that's good that's good uh i guess i can hop over to la chorus recoil i'm still watching it also shout out uh kojima is uh hideo kojima is a fan of this you, series you sent me that and no. i went it's not kubo <laughs> no it's not kubo and you know it's actually funny uh, how he started watching like Quartz Recul. Like I, I don't have the full story off the top of my head. I have the gist. Uh, he posted up on Twitter where it's like he was on, I think, Netflix, and he was trying to find one show, and then he was trying to find like another show or something like that, and he ended up one way or another stumbling upon like Quartz Recoil, thinking it was a different show, but then he just like so he just enjoyed it and just kept watching. <laughs> <laughs> like shout out to you, Kojima. Uh, uh, yeah, I will say, you know, and I've noticed this is kind of the trend for me where it takes about like four episodes usually, but I actually remember our main character's names. Shout out. It is uh, Jacetto. That is the uh, Toa character. And okay. uh, Takina is the Setsuna character, as I've been calling them this entire time. So, okay. but that's the only characters that I remember their names for. <laughs> You know, because the other character who went by, like, Walnut, uh, she's just like, you know, call me Walnut. And she said, said does this, like, no, no, what's your real name? And she would said another name. I don't even remember that name now. I'm so bad with names, bro. See, all I know about this series is you just sent me that uh, Twitter or the screenshots of A1 having fun with it and go, like, hey, here's some SAO characters in here. Yeah, yeah. That was so funny. That was so funny to me because, like, you know, because it was, uh, I think that was episode three. There was um, like one of the arms dealers, whatever, you know, elite buying, buying shit illegally. And all the LaCourse recall was there, like all to ambush him at the train. If you're watching the scene, you see like multiple SAO characters as LaCourse recoils, uh, you know, just or I don't think they're called LaCourse recoils, but I know they're called LaCourse. Um, but, you know, you see multiple of them there. Um, you know, and there you see like Asuna and you see a few others. And the reason that, that A1 did this is because the, the voice actor for this arms dealer was Kirito's voice actor. So, like, when I saw that picture, all I could picture is just like, man, fuck you, Kirito, with all, all, with all your harem. It's just like, you can't choose one woman. What's, what's wrong with you? That's all I, that's all I could picture, because it's like all of his women, basically. They're just shooting him down. Um, but I thought that was that was a nice little uh, touch by A1. But 
No, episode three was a lot. Was a pretty decent amount of action. Um, you know, because you had like the scene that I, I just described with all the like chorus. Actually, no, that might, that was four. Actually, my fault. My fault. That was four. Both episodes had that action. Then, yeah, because episode four had okay. um, had all that action there, where you see all the Lacoris basically trying to bring him down uh, in the in the subway station. They kill a lot of his men, and then he ends up bombing the subway station, killing all of those Lacoris agents. So, like all those Sao characters are done. Kirito murdered oh. all of his women. <laughs> Um, episode three had a decent amount of action too. That was just kind of entertaining to watch because you got to, you know, cause like Takina's whole purpose is that she wants to get back up to the rank that like in the area that she was before or whatever, you know, cause she's been horribly demoted, whatever. So, yeah. uh, Chisito, you know, she is like one of the top agents, even though she kind of like just dicks off all the time. You know, she, it was time for her to like, uh, get a physical or something for her, uh, for her license, uh, to be on the course. So they had to go to the headquarters. And since she is a top agent, you know, she's really tight with the boss and Takina's just like, can I, will you please hook me up? Let me talk to the boss, whatever, try to get back in. So, you know, you had like, uh, you had the moment where it's like Takina came in there thinking that she had earned her place back, which is like. Yeah, but I got this information involving this arms dealer. Here, look at this photo. That photo I mentioned from episode one, whatever, where it just so happened to be perfectly took with the with the arms deal going on in the background, that photo. And the boss is just like, ha, you think this was enough for me to let you back in? <laughs> You're worthless. Get out of my sight. So then it was just like a big mope episode of Takina feeling worthless for herself. You see like her old partner uh, paired up with her new partner who's like super like, you know, super confident and cocky. And uh, just they challenged them to like a, a 2v2 like sparring match, whatever. And Takina didn't do it at first. It was a 1v1, but Chasito was just like embarrassing them. Like she wasn't even trying to, she wasn't even attacking. Like she could have finished them off like a hundred times, but she's like just magically dodging. Like they're all like rubber bullets, you know, it's just, it, uh, you know, you don't yeah. want to fucking kill anyone, but she's dodging every bullet. She's like just, she's going up to like, uh, you know, uh, this, this new girl and basically it's like taking her gun out of her hand, take out the clip, pushing her down. Basically, it's like, ah, you suck. And oh, <laughs> like, was just embarrassing them and dragging it out. Like she could have finished them a hundred times at this point, but she was dragging it out because she was hoping that Takina would like not come to her senses and come in there and you know lay the smacketh down you know on her former partner and you know this other bitch which naturally that's what happens of course um yeah but I mean it was, it was a solid episode in that capacity and episode four though was just a it was a, it was it was a journey is one way to put it because they went shopping for panties uh so the episode started with Jacinto playing a VR game, right? And she was okay. getting she was getting her shit wrecked. She was not good at this game. Takina comes in and she plays the game and she does like a big flip in the air. And it's like super slow motion where it's like the scene is yeah, it's coming from the front of Takina, so you don't see it. But the scene is set up where Chisito clearly sees Takina's underwear. Like, and then it's like the next scene, Chisito's kind of like sitting there, like super like Mm, like thinking about it, I'm like, are we about to start? Like, is there about to be a romance between these two? Like, <laughs> like is that is that is that what's about to happen? Because there's already been some moments, you know, there's already been some moments there where it's kind of flirted with it, uh, you know. And then the whole point behind this is like, she she got fed up. She went into Takina's room and just lifted up her skirt, and you know, just to look at her underwear because Takina does not wear normal panties. She wears like men's boxers. And the reason why hey. the reason why is because they're much more flexible in battle, you know. Which fair, I, I can see where that uh, fair, I can see that. But uh, yeah, that that is like, like that was whole stick. And then uh, you know, Chisito basically asking about the rest of her wardrobe, just and Takina is very null, where she's just like, "But I have like my Lacoris outfit. What else do I need? I mean, I have this, and I have one other outfit. What's what's the problem? That's her mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, kind of like our friend Jimmy, who has literally three shirts. And it's not because he can't buy more. Trust me. It's because he only has three shirts and that's good for him. <laughs> you know, like, trust me, this man's tipping like $30 at a restaurant. This man can buy more shirts. He just doesn't. So it's that sort of mentality. Uh, so they go on a big shopping spree. That, and that that's the episode is they go on a big shopping spree, buying panties and buying all sorts of cute clothes. And they have like a nice bonding moment. And then the end half of the episode was the whole like train stuff that I mentioned. Uh, gotcha. So, I mean, it's entertaining, but like I did see where La Chorus Recoil is now like the number one summer show ongoing right now on the Crunchyroll charts, beating out Classroom of the Elite, which I also started watching it recently. Uh, I'm on the last episode of season one. So probably here in the next couple weeks, if not by next episode, I will be reviewing Classroom of the Elite season two. So look forward to that. Um, but yeah, I, I, 
I mean, I get why it's the number one. You know, I get it. You know, like a couple, you know, cute anime girls, whatever. You know, I, I get it. You know, it's just people like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like people's like all, you know, jacked up about it. Uh, but I mean, it's all right, man. I, I don't know when I'm going to end up dropping it because there is an overarching plot. It's just like how, like, can we get on to this overarching plot a little bit more? Like it's, it's constantly sprinkled in each episode, but it's not sprinkled enough for my liking. You know what I mean? Well, they can just keep doing that because just look at Witch Watch. Man, that story forgets it has a plot. <laughs> and it's still going. So that it's manga, all good. that manga forgets it has a plot. But I mean, it, yeah, of course your girl's all right. I mean, nothing to super ride home about. Uh, Rent a girlfriend, also just okay. Nothing super. Ride. It's Rent a girlfriend, bro. You know, the, you know, it's same same shit. You know, our main character freaking out over everything. This this episode was the one where his uh is forced. You know, girlfriend here, Ru- you know, Ruka, who he doesn't want to be with, but she forces herself upon him, uh, is staying at his apartment. You know, she's cooking for him and everything. It starts raining, so he, he can't send her home. You know, he discovered that she had a condom. You know, whole, whole you know, that whole gist. I mean, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was all right. You know, it, it was okay when I read the chapters. It was okay watching it. It was just like I got some laughs out of it. That's the main thing is you get laughs out of it. You know, because he's just like, you know, he doesn't, he's freaking out. Because he's just like, he really wants to fuck her, but at the same time, he doesn't want to fuck her because he doesn't care for her, you know, other than like just her well being, essentially. Yeah. Um, you know, and which, you know, was like the big lead up point where she's just like, you know, you know, super sad in a way where she's just like, you know, I know I'm not really attractive and blah, blah. I know, you know, I'm not like, you know, like uh, Mizuhara, whatever, and blah, blah, which then he he basically said, you know, he, he basically pinned her. He got on top of her. He's just like, I want to fuck you, but we can't do it this way. <laughs> just oh. please get away from me before I do something I'm going to regret. Chivalry's not dead. It's stuck in anime. <laughs> <laughs> basically. Hey, at least he admit that he's like, I want to fuck you, but I want I don't want to do it this way. This is the wrong way to do it. I'm going to. Re- so, yeah, you're right. It's stuck in anime, basically. I don't know. He, he he's an idiot. You know, he's a dunce. But you know, pulled out a twelve pack. Yeah, yeah. And then the episode ended where like uh, she was leaving the next morning, and just because she, like you know how she is, she's like super competitive, whatever. You know, uh, she she yelled outside the apartment. She's like, oh, you know, I thank you for last night. It was so great. You're so gentle. You know, trying to see if you know Mr. Hara is home and she overhears it, whatever. You know, Kazuya freaks out, you know, after she leaves. And, you know, it's just like, oh, God, did she hear it? I don't She might not be awake yet, whatever. And then just so happens, you know, you know, because of plot, you know, Mizuhara was just happened to be about to take her trash out. So she heard the whole thing. She's sitting there up against the door listening to, the, you know, Ruka scream about apparently them fucking. So it was all right, man. The- you, so I ask, what would you do if you were actually living in like an apartment complex and you and you just hear someone's like, <laughs> oh, you were great last night. Would you care? I would, honestly. Like, I, I would legit care. Even, what, if, <laughs> even if it was somebody who you were somewhat attracted to and whatnot, but would you care? Yes, I would be so concerned. I'm like, what is wrong with this person, the one that's yelling? I'm like, what is wrong with them? But, you know, I, and the reason I would care is because, like, I'm such a private person when it comes to that stuff. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I would be like, what is wrong with this individual? Just screaming to the, to the world. Oh my God. You were so good last night. Like, please stop. <laughs> so yes, I would be concerned. I, I would okay. care. I would be very concerned with what was wrong with that individual. Oh. I don't think I would care about what they were saying. I would be slightly concerned for like, why are you announcing it to everyone else? Yeah. See that, that's the thing I would, I would be con- I would I would be concerned for that. I wouldn't necessarily care, but it would be like, God, what what is going on, man? Like, what is wrong with you? Oh man, well that's that's anime teenagers or anime young adults, I guess. Yeah, young adults are all in college. That's, that's what you get with anime, though. So, uh, what about Meme Quest? What's going on over there? Are we about to the end? <laughs> Maybe one day. So we're in like we're we're supposedly in like the funnel fight. Yeah. Avon is fighting Kilvern. The beast the side characters are all fighting Mr. Vern together. And then Die is fighting um King King Vern. <clears throat> but the thing is about it, the last two episodes 
have been a lot of them just going, yeah, we're going to fight. Then we're going to talk to each other about <laughs> what it is we're doing. Then we're going to fight again. Because, <laughs> like, in the previous episode, not this week's episode, it was focused on Kilvern and Avon for a little bit and everything. It leaves us on a cliffhanger of, like, Kilvern set this whole trap and everything and left Avon in that mystical space and Avon's dead. And it did that. I went, bullshit! <laughs> I was like, his ass is going to show up again. I'm not even. And Kilbert's like, well, I could go help King Burn, but if Die beats him, he beats him. And then I can kill Die. I'll just take my time to get there. And he walks off. Uh, Die and King Vern still have this weird relationship of, like, they're enemies, but Die hasn't had this great sage character to help him get advice and explain his abilities to him, so mm. King Vern's also sort of doing that for some reason. Okay. In the middle of the battle, and I'm just like, okay, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, the B-Squad... The B-Squad. ...is fighting Mr. Vern. And this is the current episode that was just this past week. And they're standing there, and there's Mr. Mr. Vern's just like, how do you plan to defeat me? None of you can hurt me. And Hugo's just like, well, there's one person who can hurt you. And he just looks at him. And him's got his metallic hair now and all this and everything. And he's just like, yeah, I can beat your ass. <laughs> and you, our little rat guy from a while back, who's been slowly forming his group of uh, beast commandos, he met him for the first time when Hunkle was dying and she just went, Hi, huh, you're helping Hunkle. You're now one of the Beast Commandos. And draws a number on him, making him number 12. And him's about to go fight, and she's just like, Stop! You can't attack him without your captain's permission. And him sort of just be like, Can I go beat his ass, Captain? It's like, <laughs> yeah, you go do that. It's like, cool. He goes and starts and just becomes a JoJo character. <laughs> and it's just punching the crap out of Mr. Vern and everything. Mr. Vern's like, that hurt. Why is this hurt? <laughs> and he's just like, a puppet had, can use life aura? What is this nonsense? And he's just like, and they go to explain the whole Hadlar thing. He's just like, Hadlar gave his life to save your life and give you aura? And straight up calls, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so like, even the show's calling bullshit now. On its own stuff. And it's going on. At him's more or less throwing Mr. Vern's shit. Mr. Vern's having this internal thing. He's like, King Vern, he's not responding to me. Oh, well, he'll forgive me later. And I guess he's finally going to release his energy or whatnot. Because, like, this entire fight's going on. And he's just like, well, I'm going to kill you, Mr. Vern. And I was just like, but Mr. Vern still has that whole second body thing that it showed briefly, but got stopped. So I'm like... I'm assuming he's going to final form, so it, this whole fight thing that's going on, I'm just like, meh. Oh. And yeah, there's this whole dynamic of him and Chu going this whole time, and even one of the other characters, while Chu's saying crap to him and whatnot, they're just like, why is he just acting like him's his subordinate when him's very obviously the strongest person standing here right now? It's like, this makes no sense. But oh well, it just carries on. <laughs> and then, oh. Uh, it goes back, it ends up going back to Die and uh, King Vern, and Die's just going, King Vern's really weak for some reason. This doesn't feel right. Is, is he not using his full power? And King Vern stands up, Ah, I see you've noticed. Let me show you how I really fight. And I went, God dang it! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So we're getting somewhere. I have a question. So, all right, let's 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 explore an alternate reality right now, okay? Okay. So let's let's explore this alternate reality where you came on and did that guest appearance episode, right? Okay. And you came on to the show for you know, let's say up to like episode twelve or thirteen, and let's say for whatever reason you left the show, or I got tired of you and I kicked you off. Would you still be watching Dragon Quest, or are you literally just fucking beating your skull every week for this show? 
probably would not be ever watching Dragon Quest. <laughs> 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 this this show is slowly killing you. I'm convinced. <laughs> this show is killing you. I don't know. So if I had been on for like, because like, we started back at episode three, it was when this started. Yep, if by twelve three or thirteen, four, I would have yeah. been like ten episodes in it or not and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. Based on where it was, I might have watched it till about episode 24, 25 And, and when it hit done. that twenty six, I would have probably had a very internal debate of me. It was like. <laughs> Do I continue just because I've watched at least a season's worth of episodes? Right. Or do I just say, screw it and just end this? Is Drag Quest a show that you would recommend to anyone? I mean, yes, because, <laughs> I mean, it. it is very obvious that Dragon Quest was written during the earlier, like, yeah, yeah. 80s, 90s, and with all the tropes and whatnot. So I know there is an audience for it. Very obviously, because whenever a new episode pops up on Crunchyroll, it rockets back up, but slowly falls down through the week before the next episode. So, is it a series I would recommend to someone? Yes, knowing if they like that kind of stuff. Is it a series I would recommend often? Probably not. Fair enough. So, on the uh, potential future bonus episode we're going to do of a you know, series that you'd recommend for someone to get into anime and manga, that would not be one. I don't know. So, oh. so like for doing it like as a gateway anime, I think it would actually do very good as a gateway really. Anime. That's not yes. what I expected. So, so yeah, for like a gateway anime for someone who may not know anime or done nothing, I would actually probably suggest Dragon Quest, oh even with God. all its tropes and everything. Does that mean? Does that mean you're gonna chat about it in that episode? We'll see. Oh my God. Yeah, we got we do have some bonus episodes coming out here. They're not bonus episodes because they're gonna be like normal numbered episodes for us, but they're not gonna be our normal weekly stuff. And it's we're just doing this to plan for upcoming breaks that we know that we need to take. We have like two weeks in a row off here in August that we need to take off. Uh, so we're gonna put out some extra episodes for that. Uh, and then there's a week in in October that I will not be here. I will be thankfully on vacation. I'm fucking counting down. So put out a bonus episode for that, or extra episode, or not, you know what I mean, whatever. Uh, I know one that we're doing for sure is talking about, like, you know, who is, like, the current big three or big five in manga and anime, and who could be the next big three or big five, or have we even seen them yet? You know, because that, that happens every generation, every decade. There's a big yeah. three, there's a big five, every decade. So I feel like that's going to be a really fun episode, because I know one thing, I, I was texting you about this, that we're going to have to distinguish in that episode and us chat about, and you know maybe debate about, I don't know, is some of these series that started on the second half of, tw of the two, 2010s, are they 2010s, big three or big five, or are they 2020? You know, like the My Hero, the Black Clover, the Demon Slayer. So yeah. it's it's gonna be some good combos, and then I we're probably gonna do the, uh, you know, honestly the way you said it, it's a lot better than the way I've always said it. Gateway anime, you know, I've always said it, you know, as anime or manga that you would recommend for someone to get into anime or manga. What, what the long drawn out long, yeah. yeah. Gateway anime is a better way to put it. So yeah, we'll we'll do those, and then uh, I don't know, we will do another one. I, I personally want to do like our top ten favorite series of all time, and maybe update it, like do that episode every couple years. You know, in case things get added to it. Because I don't think we've done that yet, have we? We've done, like, favorite arcs. I think we've done favorite yeah, I don't characters. Think, I don't think we've done up straight just animes. Because, I mean... I feel like that'd be a, an important one to do, honestly. <laughs> we each mentioned stuff from yeah, we have. our favorite animes during different ones. But I don't think we've ever done our favorite anime list. I feel like that's one we really need to do. And do it either, like, yearly or bi-yearly. Because, I mean, like, if you're doing an anime manga podcast, I feel like it's a good thing to do to, like, do an episode to establish your favorites. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, maybe not, like, right off the bat do it, whatever. You know, but, like, at some point in your show's history, I feel like you should probably, like, do it. It'd be a fun conversation, but... Yeah, it would be good. Uh, anyway, um, I'll hop over to Summertime. Bro, Summertime was so good. Back-to-back -back episodes, 14 and 15. So, 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 so damn good. So, with 14, you know, we're picking up where we left off, where, like, they were seeing the past, whatever. Uh, yeah. Still doesn't get explained how that happened, uh, but, again, with how this show has always been could still be explained here soon because it always it's done good about explaining what's happening but when you need to know it you know what i mean okay. like, yeah. like at some point it will tell you hey this is how this you know because another example is uh you know every time he has you know shimpei has died you know he's moving forward 
in episode, mm-hmm. I think it was 15, he has now come to a conclusion because he's, he's, he's very smart where he has now figured out roughly how much further it's continuing to go forward. So like in episode 15, he said that if he dies again, it should be, you know, he, cause he's just like, all right, yeah, when I died last time I was here. If I was to die again, you know, like let's say right now I would come back, I believe seven minutes ago. You know, so like he's starting to figure that. So like you get little tidbits constantly of like how this happens, whatever. But in terms of like when he died and he got in that loop where he was viewing the past, not fully explained how that happened other than the main point of going to see the past is how Heine, you know, killed Rinosuke all those years okay. ago. You know, um, you know, Hizuru's brother, like uh, the, I guess the, the only way they may have explained is the fact that, you know, Heine and... Shimpei are essentially looping together as well as, you know, Shimpei looping with that shadow Urshiro. Uh, gotcha. So the first part of that episode, you basically get to see that whole past sequence take place. You get to see when Renosuke is killed brutally, by the way, you get to see when Heine have been, uh, uh, turns into like this, you know, into what she is as this shadow ruler creator where like, even after she kills Renosuke, she doesn't really know what she did at first. And then it just kind of like went from there. You see the birth of like the first couple shadows. You see Nezu, the old man, how he lost his eye because he was there, you know, and, Mm -hmm. you know, you see the moment when Renosuke's spirit or his soul or shadow shadows, I guess the best way to put it, obviously, ends up basically being within his room and how they are merged, how they are one. You get to further see how, you know, Renosuke is similar to Urshiro in terms of he is a shadow that can exhort like large amounts of power and is just very strong because it's even talked about the first time that he took over his body in that moment after he died, you know, he did some maneuver where he kind of like, you know, his arm, like his arm was being held. He like flipped back. He accidentally dislocated her shoulder, uh, by jumping in the air, saving Nezu, like fucking like broke her ankle whenever, you know, you know, he lands. So essentially Renosuke is always holding back. So he doesn't damage his sister's body. So you gotcha. get you get little tidbits like that, and then once you come back into you know where they finally loop again, um, they essentially kind of gather up the gang at this point, you know, because they're getting ready, you know, for a fight. Because right when he comes back, it's right before that house sequence where Renosuke goes in and gets fucked up immediately. So Renosuke's like, "All right, I'm going in," and Shimpei's like, "Wait, wait, no, don't." <laughs> and then, you know, Renosuke's just like, "Oh, wait, did you just?" Did you just loop? Did you just die? It's like, yeah. It's like, what happened to me? Oh yeah, you got your shit wrecked. Don't go in there, bud. <laughs> so they, <laughs> they they leave. They regroup. You get a shot of uh, Heine as well, where you actually see, you know, this because like while it's already been established as you the the watcher, like okay, yes, Heine's looping with them. Now you actually see the moment when Heine realizes that oh he just looped because like it, it now shows inside that house they're about to go into when you know Heine is as the little girl. And you see her kind of like eating, and then you see her kind of look up, like her eye kind of, you know, make a different color or whatever. And she's just like, oh, Shinpei just looped. You know, so you got to just see the moment when that happens. And also, while this whole dinner is happening, right, like you have the shadow, you have Heine as the shadow little girl, you have the two parents that are shadows as well, you know, just all sitting there. I did, then you see big ass fucking buff ass forearms just at the tables <laughs> eating too, you know, and he's super, Hey, he's super polite. Cause he even asked the mom, he's like, man, I please have seconds. You know, like he's a very polite, even though he's, you know, he will murder you point blank, cold blood, which you also get his name, by the way, it's uh shibby. You get his name, but I still just probably gonna call him forearms. I'm telling you, dude, he just looks like a completely like blacked out version of Ben 10 forearms. That's, that's what he looks like to me. Yeah, I mean, he, he may be a, Murder in the muscle for Haney, but he's got to have manners. He's got standards. He he does have standards. I'm proud of him for that. Um, so you know, after that, they kind of regroup and they go to kind of gather up the gang. Essentially, they finally bring Mio into it, but they bring her into it to the extent to protect her, not for her to necessarily fight. You know, they bring the perv cop into it. Uh, you know, uh, Toiko, the sister who was originally side of the shadows, they end up bringing her into it by just saying, hey, we know that you're with the shadows. Hey, you're going to die if you don't listen to me. And they, they basically convince her, you know, like, hey, don't, you know, it, it's not like it's a hard convincing. You don't even get to see it. It's like off screen, essentially. You know, the brother who has already kind of helped them in previous loops anyway, like they're all in uh, they're all in like an auditorium at a school making a plan, formulating what they're going to do. Like, yo, we got this. Like, we're going to fucking we're going to fuck shit up. We're going to give our, do our best. And if we don't, whatever, I'll just loop. No big deal. You know, Nezu is outside the school, you know, with a sniper. He's watching out for these fuckers. 
He's going to fuck them up if they come in there. You know, he's watching, watching. All of a sudden, knife in the head. <laughs> the shadow snuck up on Nezu, just knife right in the top of the head. Kills him. Bring it back to the gang. You know, just whatever. And uh, Shinpei says something. And everyone's just like, yeah, fuck, we got this. Let's go. And then all of a sudden, it's just like quick white. No sound. Just a quick white. And you just see Shinpei in his kitchen cutting a sandwich. And he's like. Did I just die? <laughs> they, they, they shot a sniper into the building and killed him at that moment. Uh, so figured out he died. Fuck, got fucked up. And then uh, he realized, all right, yeah, Nezu was uh, too far away. Uh, you know, because if he would have been a little bit closer or whatever, Urshro, for example, could have sensed shadows. But, you know, it's just like outside of her range. So they basically kind of bring it back all in. You know, everyone's all contained within like the auditorium area. And this is where... You get a is where you get a lot of fighting. All right, we're in episode fifteen at this point, and you get a lot of fighting between like Shinpei's gang and the big Shadow Gang because the Shadow Gang brings their army, bro. Like you know, you have you know forearms walking with you know having Heine up on his shoulder, and you just have like an army of shadows coming with them. You know, at, you know, coming to this auditorium all for this sole purpose. At this point, they are no longer trying to kill Shinpei because the original... Oh, no, they are trying to kill Shinpei. Sorry. The original plan is that they were going to try to kidnap Shinpei where he does not loop anymore to interfere with their plans. But once Heine kind of fully realized they're looping together, she's just like, yeah, no, fuck him. Just keep murdering him. He's going to end up falling off the ledge eventually because he keeps going forward. You know, like he's going to get to the point where they're at the festival day and he can't loop anymore. What well, you know, So they're just like, no, just hunt this son of a bitch down, murder him nonstop. Because it's just going to keep looping, and he's going to end up falling off the ledge at some point. Uh, so that's their new directives. But like with this whole fight, bro, lots of stuff went down. Uh, you know, Nezu being a badass of a sniper. You know, because uh, you know he's sitting there firing down the battlefield, trying to hit some shadows, do some good. He's getting some good snipes. All right, boom, 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 killing one shadow after another. You know, try shooting forearms, just do some damage. Didn't do a fucking thing. And Nezu's like, all right, yep, yep. This shadow is uh, no joke. Oh, shit. I might be fucked. And uh, you see, like, you know, you see the forearms, like, pick up, like, a little pebble. And he's just like, boop. And just, like, flicks it. Goes straight through the scope of the sniper. Like, completely just, like, grazes Nezu the side of his head, whatever. But even with that, he's still just, like, eyeballing shots later. He's like, yeah, that looks about right. And just takes a shot, knocking shit out, being a badass. You get some good sequence fighting between Urshiro and um, you know Heine and Forearms as well, because they're trying to kill Shimpe in this uh, in in this whole sequence. Of course, you see some good fighting mm -hmm. with Renosuke as well. He gets kind of fucked up in a couple of ways. You know, just a lot of good fighting happening. You see like uh, Mio and Sa and um, uh, Sao and Toiko who. Uh, Toiko controls the babies, by the way. You know, she just has like a little binky and some of those weird ass fucking babies. Uh, okay. So with Urshiro, you know, we dial it back a few episodes, right? We dial it back a few episodes when Heine was trying to corrupt her and erase, um, you know, Urshiro or whatever, and then she started to reverse it. So when that happened, Urshiro basically discovered that she can essentially corrupt shadows as well. So going into this fight, she already like. Re like she already kind of reprogrammed those baby shadows so like when those big ass babies are fighting out in the battlefield whatever Heine sees it and she's just like you don't listen to Toko you listen to Mina you murder him and it has like a night it has a moment where it's just like you as the viewer are just like like one of the babies standing right beside to right behind Toko and you're just like oh my god is she about is she about to just get fucked you see another baby uh you know fighting the shadow Mio and uh shadow Mio's just like all right yeah Heine's gonna He's going to turn these babies against him, and we're good. We're going to be in good shape. No big deal. I got this. And then that baby that's standing in front of Mio just wham, just punches her, completely obliterates the first part of Mio's body. And it, you know, the babies are in control, you know, by Toiko. Heine has no control over him because Urshiro recorrupted him, which was a nice kind of drawn out scene of suspense of like what's about to happen. And then we bring to the big climax of this episode where it takes place in the auditorium. Forearms, man. I sent you this. Yeah, you sent me that shot. What sick fuck thought it was a dope idea to turn forearms into like a giant, massive shadow spider? Like, basically all these shadows kind of all formed together with forearms, and he just became a massive spider. But like... What made it extra creepy, and if you're, this might be your first time listening to Anime Plus, I, I'm horrified of spiders, terrible arachnophobia. Like, all of its individual legs, like, were still like normal hands. 
Like each one of them still had normal hands. It's spider fangs was like normal arms with fingers and hands. And it was just like, what sick fuck thinks of this? Like, what is wrong with you to come up with this idea? Horrifying thing, but just horrifying. The worst. Uh, but it was nice to see that horrifying creation go up in fucking flames because they set this thing as a trap. They burned the, They were started just burning down the whole auditorium to burn this thing alive. And th- and this is like was such a great ending for this episode because like you felt like they made so much progress in these in this single episode of where it's like oh shit they're actually going to get a W for once. And then it like it sets it up where it's like it's all gonna get ripped away where they're not not where they're gonna lose and they're gonna they're gonna get fucked because like Urshiro, you know they had um, they had Heine you know ready to get recorrupted whatever she tried to do some crocodile tears situation you know and you know they're not gonna fall for it but then you know four arms ends up grabbing Urshiro from the upper balcony and pulls her down into the fire so you see Urshiro just getting like lit and burned. And, you know, you are assuming that the shadow of Urshiro is just completely dying. Uh, you see Shinpei get shot in a couple of different areas, but it's not, like, fatal where he's going to die right away, but he is going to bleed yeah. out here very soon and die. Um, so it's like, it, 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 you know, you get in this sense of, oh, my God, we actually get, we're going to get a fucking dub, and then it's all just ripped away from you. But then it all comes back where you're going to get the dub. Because uh, the Urshiro that you get to see get burned alive was actually just, like, a copy because in in this whole sequence of while everything's happening, because Ursula is just at this point now that she's unlocking like her memories and just basically her shadow powers, she's very fast, she's very efficient, and she knows what she's doing. In this whole moment, she switches herself from a copy to her little necklace. So she is the necklace in this because I mean, oh okay, yeah. So like you see the you see Ursula just get completely just murdered and obliterated, and all of a sudden you just see like the little shell necklace just fall out of the sky. And then just Urshiro appears and just punches right through Forum's gut. Just like, and just fucks Forum up. Uh, then Heine does something that was kind of interesting as well, where even Heine didn't know how she did it. No, it was Urshiro that didn't know how she did the counterpoint. So Heine essentially removed all of the air from in that building. So she got rid of all of the air in the building, so Shinpei starts choking to death. You know, the cop, he's been in there, too. He's been helping out from the back, just kind of throwing stuff, being a pussy. You know, he starts choking to death, and then Urshiro somehow manages to essentially recreate the air, which causes all the windows to blow out and stuff. You know, Heine gets away, Forearms gets away, but when they get away and they're horribly damaged, like, Forearms doesn't have a body right now. He is essentially just like a little like a, like a little, little pebble, basically, like, you know, within Heine once again. Uh, he does not have a physical form. He even openly admits, yep, I got fucked up gonna take some time to recover but you know you you know they're they're talking Heine's fucked up it's just like well you know those shots i got on shimpei you know it'll be fine he'll be dead here soon and we'll loop no big deal brings us back to shimpei he was wearing a bulletproof vest he's good so no loop is about to happen he did get shot on like the shoulder but in the areas that would have killed him he's good so while our antagonists believe a loop is about to happen they believe they've won for this loop even though it was a tough f- tough battle they believe it's about to happen it's not so they're gonna they're sitting there and they're fucked up. They're having to recover. Our heroes finally get a dub, and it was awesome. It was a great episode. Great couple episodes, man. It's good to see finally a dub happen. Because there's been nothing but just murder and just brutality nonstop. And they have lost at every turn. <laughs> I mean, it's got a dub. Girl, only got like 10 episodes left. They had to get a dub finally. Yep, had to get a dub finally. So I am curious. Uh, I'm super pumped to watch the new episode probably tomorrow. Um, I'm super pumped to mm-hmm. see uh, what happens from here since we're still in this loop, the seventh loop. Which also, by the way, uh, is apparently the final loop. Is what the yeah, he can loop like one like the next time he dies, that next loop is the final loop. If he dies again, there's n- yeah he's he's fucked essentially. Oh he, okay. He will be at the festival. So this is it. This loop. This is it right here. Uh, so th- th- it's some hype shit, bro. Uh, favorite episode of the week. Uh, I-, I think it's pretty clear what mine is. Uh, Overlord. All right, fair. All right, let's jump into manga chapter ratings, wrap up the show beautifully. Uh, all right, so first off, One Piece, 1,054. Uh, so <laughs> I do want to give a shout-out. Green Bull, he is a joke. <laughs> you I don't know who that is, so. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't. Uh, Green Bull, actually, you may. I don't know. I don't know where you stopped. Green Bull is like the, the secret, you know, 
third admiral that we've only seen like one other time as a glimpse when he was on a snail phone and that was it. Yeah, no, no okay. clue. Yeah, he's the third admiral after the time skip because it's still Kiz- Kizaru, whatever, the light dude. Kizaru. Yeah, and then there's the blind guy, right? Yeah, he's blind, right? Yeah. Yeah, F- Fujitoro maybe I think is his name. You, you, I believe so. Yeah, because he's in Dressrosa arc. But then there's the third admiral who was like only teased one time. Well, he re- he made an appearance before the, before the hiatus took place. And now like this chapter and the chapter is coming out Sunday. I've already seen some screenshots for it. Uh, he's a giant joke, like which is true Oda fashion. But at the same time, it's like you had this big build up for a character and you make him a complete fucking clown. Like where he like it's almost like in a way where it's like you're expecting him to go in there and just fuck shit up. But then he's the one that just gets fucked up. <laughs> it's like, all right, really? Uh, but I mean, yeah, and one of the admirals was due for that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I give it an eight though. Uh, My Hero three sixty. I give it an eight. Eight as well. Uh, Black Clover's on its way back. By the way, by the sometime in August, it'll be back. So yeah. Shout out to that. Uh, GJK was on a break this week. Uh, Mister yep. Score Family one thirty nine. I would give this one. I'd give this one an eight. I enjoyed this chapter. Undone Luck one twenty. I would give this one an eight. Enjoyed this one too. Uh, Mashal one seventeen. I'll give it a seven. Seven as well. Sakamoto Day chapter eighty. I'll give it a seven. Yeah, I'll give it a six. I lose Samurai seventy two. Seven. I'm still slacking here. Uh, Blue Box sixty two. I'll give it a nine. I'll give it a nine as well. I love that ending. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> this, I this poor dude. It, but still. This poor dude. <laughs> uh, P six forty two. Give it an eight. Akane Banashi, 23. Give it a seven. Chainsaw Man, episode chapter 100. Seven. I know you can't hear it, but do you want me to hit the button for the listeners? I mean, it wasn't to that degree, okay. but... I was ready to go. I had my finger on it. Uh, I give it a seven. Uh, Dragon Ball Super. That time again. Yep. Yep. Came out last week. Uh, no Boruto this month, though. Boruto's on a one month break. Uh, but yeah, Dragon Ball Super, chapter 86. Uh, I'm over some of this stuff that Dragon Ball Super is doing, honestly. Once again, Goku unleashed his Sasuno, you know, to help win the battle. It's stupid, honestly. Uh, I give it a six, maybe a five, even. <laughs> I'm so I'm so <laughs> over this arc. And I'm over these names too, man. Gas, granola, the cereal ends. There's a character named Oil. I mean, like, bro, I'm so over the. <laughs> I'm so. I know it's true Dragon Ball fashion, but it's like at this point we're going over the top with it. <laughs> uh, I'm over this arc. Uh, anyway, uh, Kaiju number eight, chapter sixty-seven. That was last week, I believe. I give it an eight. Okay. Uh, Spy Family, 65. <laughs> I give it a 9, honestly. I give it a 9 as well. Yeah. Took your Avengers, 263. I give it an 8, personally. For what it was, I'll give it an 8. Uh, Rent a Girlfriend, 245. I'll give it a 7. Eden Zero, 201. I'll give this one a 9. Didn't read. Good chapter. Good chapter. 7 Deadly Sins, Final Fantasy Apocalypse, 72. Uh, uh, probably a six. Kind of a lackluster chapter, in my opinion. Uh, unordinary two sixty nine. Shout out to dad. Seven. Shout out to dad. What are you talking about? I love this chapter. This chapter is great. I still give it a seven. I give it a nine. I enjoy. I, I enjoyed the dad energy in this chapter, where he's just like coming in to embarrass his son, essentially. Uh, true beauty two sixteen. We are at. A very pivotal moment in True Beauty's history. This is it. This is the moment that everyone has been waiting for since the very beginning. It is finally happening. It's finally going down. But to what extent? We shall see. And that involves, obviously, her big secret. Her big secret being revealed to the world. But now it's the question, are we going to fully, like, are we going to fully capitalize on this? Like I, I feel like we are, but like her 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 secret was revealed to the world, right? And then there was counter articles coming out from her agency where it's just like, this is all coming from her a high school bully of hers, whatever. So, but I mean, it, it it's out there. 
It's out there. People know what she looks like now. So we're at a very pivotal moment in this series history. So I'm going to give it a nine. This is very good. Weak Hero, 200. Yeah, uh, seven. Yeah, seven. I'm not really vibing with this backstory, honestly. And I guess it's because I just don't give a shit about Jimmy. I'm I'm really not a fan of Jimmy. I mean, he's okay. I mean, I mean, he's just a personification of pride. So yeah, I, I'm not vibing with this backstory personally. I do like how all the comments were just like, he didn't deny that was his boyfriend. <laughs> all the comments were pointing that out. <laughs> oh, so that's a sh- that's a ship there. Uh, El Cid, one seventy nine. I give it an eight. Let's play 172. Um, I would give this one a 9 as well. I enjoyed this chapter. Uh, Sub-Zero, 147. Now that I said that chapter number out loud, I don't think I read this. That's my fault. Uh, Down to Earth, 106. I would give this one an 8. Suit Armor, 74. I would give this one a 7. Mage and Demon Queen, Season 3, Episode 34, which is the mid-season finale. So back on a break, which, you know, it is, this, this series goes on a lot of breaks. I mean, te- you know, that's awesome. You know, I'm glad the, glad the creator takes, takes, takes their breaks. It's good. Uh, I'd give this one probably like an eight, uh, reunion 24. Uh, I would give this one a, I'd give this one a, this is a good bro episode. I'm all about some good bro chapters. I'm about that. I'm about some bromances. And then a new one added to the lineup because it just started recently. So I want to give it I want to give it its due because I personally have enjoyed the read so far. Uh, a new series called Immortal Weakling. Uh, if you if you read Webtoon, you may have seen it advertised. It's only seven chapters in so far. If you are a My Hero Academia fan, you will enjoy this series. Because uh, it does like it does take a lot of My Hero. Hard, hard, hard inspirations from my hero but it is pretty fascinating where everyone has like their powers and stuff and people want to you know they're you know people want to be heroes and blah 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 and our our you know main character of course in true like you know fashion of a shonen series is you know somehow handicapped you know uh in his case it's what his power is where he is essentially immortal uh but the problem with his power is that with how he heals himself he can't get stronger so, like, if he, like, hardcore, like, works out, like, tries to get buff and stuff, his body's just going to heal back to the state that it was previously in. So, the, as of now, seven chapters in, like, he's stuck as this, like, skinny little scrawny weakling who can just get punched around, but he's got a big heart and he knows he can't die. So, he's going to be willing to get punched around and just figure out a way to win. That's kind of the mentality. You're telling me he's the ultimate meat shield. Basically, yeah. You know, because, like, for an example when you get introduced to like uh you know to him and like our main like female character uh she was a nurse's uh, a doctor's assistant whatever a surgeon and she's just like all right you know you're up whatever but it shows that you've donated your organs like 74 times that can't be right what what's wrong he's like oh no that's right that's right and the doctor's like yeah the doctor comes up he's like oh yeah this is like one of our normal patients he donates his organs like once a week you know uh because they just grow back so it's not a big deal <laughs> So like, yeah, we don't even have to do. We just leave him on a table. He'll wake up in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Like that's exactly exactly right. So I mean, you know, he gets like enrolled into like uh, basically like the Hero Academy. You know, same same sort of shit as my hero. So I'm telling you, if you like my hero academia, you you would like a mortal weakling. I mean, it, it's it's entertaining. So I'll, I'll probably be reviewing it for uh, quite a while until I get bored of it at least. Uh, chapter seven, though, I'd give it an eight personally. Uh, favorite chapter of the week. Blue box. That is a fair selection. Uh, I don't know what mine would be, honestly. That is a good, good question. Uh, might be Blue Box. Blue Box was once again a phenomenal read. So I'd say Blue Box, or or just because it hasn't had its due for quite a while. Eden Zero. Eden Zero was a pretty hype chapter. Actually, I don't know. You know what? I may have just because it finally fucking happened. I may have to give it to True Beauty. I mean, this has been a long time coming. I mean, the whole, that's the whole, this is the whole point of the series. You know, like that's the whole plot. That's literally the description of the webtoon. When you go to click on it and, you know, read about what the series is about. Yeah, she has her, this secret life, this this double life that she's living. So the fact that we're finally to a point where it's being revealed to the world, I, I might have to give, I'll give it to True Beauty. We're finally, this is like, this is like the same pivotal moment of whenever uh, Seojin found out her 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 appearance her true appearance because he didn't know obviously right. when, they, when they were dating it's like 
it's like the same level as that, but even greater because this is like the whole world knows what she really looks like now. Yeah. So this is a this is a big pivotal moment. But uh, anyway, that is it. Uh, Zach, last thoughts? Anything that we chat about here today? Anything else we want to shout out? Uh, no, not particularly. Not this week. All right. Well, I'm gonna hit the music and we're gonna go. So last thoughts. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, whatever your platform allows. It does help. Watch on this YouTube. You can hit the subscribe button to help us build that community. You can also hit the bell to notify when any video goes up. Thank you very much. Do everything he said and more. Go check us out on our website, sparky3.com. You sign up for free, sign up five bucks a month. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, go over and check out sparky3shop.com. Use promo code ARTISCOOL. Get 25% off everything in the shop. Join the Discord. Follow us over at Twitter. And uh, check out our sponsors. Like... Red Dragon, promo code Game Aesthetic, 10% off. Swift Grips, promo code Game Aesthetic, for 10% off. And of course, Rogue Energy. Use the referral link down below and use promo code Sparky3 for 10% off. Uh, with that said, until next time, guys, have a good one. See ya.